Heimdall, the god who sees everything, including the future. This god had nine moms, <laughs> one dad, nine mothers, and they were all sisters too. I know, right? Why can't I watch that movie? Is that like an OnlyFans thing? Or what's up with that? Heimdall's father is, of course, Odin, the All Father. And when you're the all-father and you come across nine beautiful Yudun sisters ready for some daddy roleplay, well, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. And nine months later, nine sisters gave birth to one child, Heimdall. I don't know if they each carried Heimdall for a month or how that works, but we don't question Norse mythology too much because this is also where Loki gave birth to a horse with eight legs and his baby mama birthed a snake that can circle the world. It is what it is. The nine moms' combined efforts bless Heimdall with powers of sight and hearing. He can hear so well, he hears the grass and the wool on the back of sheep growing, and he can see for a hundred miles, even in the dark, and into the future, which is why Heimdall and his famous horn, Gjallarhorn, play a very important role within Asgard. But Heimdall and his other horn were also quite famous. My guy had a serious body count, and virtually no pullout game. Like, None. But more details on that later. Oh, and for all the Loki fans, Heimdall also kills Loki. Now you have all the headlines, what's missing is the details. So let's do this. <laughs> touched on Heimdall's inexplicable nine mom's birth that granted him his insane all-seeing, all-hearing powers, which naturally then made him the perfect guardian for Asgard. With Heimdall standing guard at Asgard's trippy rainbow bridge, the Bifrost, no one could enter unseen. And in fact, no one in Asgard could do anything unseen. <laughs> like, my guy sees a hundred miles in the dark, sees the future, hears everything, like, no privacy, you get me. You are forever flicking beans and pulling your one-eyed monster to an audience of the all-seeing monster. Heimdall is always watching. Dude had the stalker skill tree leveled to the max without even trying, which explains why his guard post at the beef rest was famously always stacked with tons of alcohol. My man was enjoying the show while getting his buzz on. The only thing about it that sucks is that Heimdall's drunk peep show was a lonely existence. While the other gods partied and mingled, Heimdall's place was at his guard post. Since the beef first connects Asgard to all the other realms, someone had to document all the coming and going. Though it's never explicitly stated in the ancient texts that giving entering and exit permits is part of Heimdall's job, it's gotta be. Because as far as just warning Asgard of an invasion, Heimdall could do that from anywhere. He sees everything and the future. The ancient texts don't refer to Heimdall as Asgard's bouncer, but I like to think he was. I mean, the dude was described to have golden teeth, and the ancient texts don't state any other god was wearing grills, so that's literally the most bouncer thing ever. And while on bouncer duty, Heimdall always had his massive horn ready, which is a joke I already made once, so I'm gonna skip past it right here and go to the actual name, the Gjallarhorn. One blow is all it takes. One blow is all it takes to warn all of Asgard, and blowing the Gjallarhorn was reserved for one occasion only, the coming of Ragnarok. So Heimdall only ever used it once. And a cool side note here is that this all kind of reminds me of the wall and the night watch in Game of Thrones, like lonely existence, lots of drinking, blowing into a horn to announce danger, you, you see it too, right? So with all the loneliness in mind, you can forgive Heimdall for being a bit of a homewrecker. <laughs> this guy had a bit of a fetish for sleeping with other dudes' wives, uh, next to the dude. <laughs> It sounds weird, but Google it. It's like a whole genre. And some of these movies these days have insane production value. Like, it's crazy. Heimdall's habit of putting his horn where it doesn't belong is why Heimdall is also known by another title. Okay, I made that title up, but you'll see what I mean, and you'll agree. The story goes that Heimdall ventured from his guard post for some action from time to time. You know, just like the Night's Watch enjoy a secret dip into the nearest brothel town once in a while. 
Granted with his powers, Heimdall could still perform his watch duty while out and about on booty duty and while he was out, Mr. Steal Your Girl had three conquests in general that he wanted to focus on. Three conquests during which he casually created classism and became known as the father of all slaves, the father of all farmers and the father of all nobles, so all in all the father of social classes. One night, Heimdall visited a poor couple in their run-down shack on the side of an abandoned road. He announced himself as Rig, because you can't go around telling people, yo, I'm Heimdall, no relation to the god, by the way, how you doing? It's unnecessary, complicated. The couple invited Rig into their home, and he stayed for dinner and spent the night, which for some reason he did sleeping in between the couple. So when the husband was out cold, Rig repaired the hospitality by getting it on with his wife, bareback. And nine months later, their wife gave birth to a son that she then named Thrall, which literally translates to slave. Yeah, she named her son Slave. Slave then married a girl named Fir, which translates to slave girl. In keeping with tradition, they gave their kids northern names that translate to mean fat boy, fat calf, fat stinker, and fatty. I'm not kidding. This is literally in the ancient text. In total, they had 12 sons and 9 daughters, and that family and their future offspring became known as the slaves, or more appropriately translated for today, the lower class. Another time, Heimdall pulled his old, I'm a hungry wanderer named Rick, how you doing? BS on a couple that was a bit better off. They also invited him in for dinner, and Rig again refused the guest room to instead get cozy in between the couple, waited until the husband was asleep, did the thing with the wife, and nine months later she gave birth to Carl. Yeah, no cool name like slave, just Carl would later marry a solid wife, and they lived a solid life and had 22 solid children, all with solid names, whose meaning translates to mean Smith or Freeman, and they became the craftsmen, free farmers, the herdsmen, and that stuff, or in other words, the middle class. For his last display of a non-existing pullout game, Heimdall visited a wealthy couple in their mansion. Same game, and nine months later, the wife gave birth to a son named Jarl, which is ancient north for lord, that's literally what it means, it means lord. Jarl was a special boy, he was strong, beautiful, a great hunter, smart, everything you could wish of a man. So Heimdall visited the couple again and said, listen, first of all, I banged your girl, <laughs> thanks for the food by the way, it was very good, and I didn't want anything to do with the fat slave boys or the mediocre farmers, but this boy right here, man, that's a man's man. Name sucks though, Jarl, <laughs> what even is that, come on. Let's name him after me, Rig, because I'm awesome, so. Let's go, little Rick, and take the boy. So Heimdall did take the boy. Jarl's name was officially changed to Rig, and he became a great lord, married a great woman, and had 12 sons with her, all warriors and lords, whose names were all synonyms for royalty and greatness. They became the upper class. So you see how Mr. Steal Your Girl is a fitting nickname for the god that just casually invented classism because he didn't have a pullout game. Due to his powers of being all-seeing and all-hearing, Heimdall also kind of became the official lost and found of the Norse gods, and when Freya once lost her necklace, she went straight to Heimdall to help her find it. Mind you, this was a special necklace, Freya had to sleep with four dwarves to get it. Now don't be shocked, that's such a Freya thing to do, watch my Freya video for more on that. The necklace was called Brisingamen, and it had the magical power to make its wearer absolutely irresistible. And that's where Loki enters the story, because can you imagine the power of being irresistible in Loki's hands? <laughs> so Loki stole the necklace, and it didn't take Heimdall long to find out. And when he tracked Loki down, Loki was in the form of a seal. <laughs> because of course. So to fight Loki for it, Heimdall also transformed into a seal. Of course. Heimdall won the ensuing seal fight. The necklace was safely returned to Freya, and I now want to see an epic blockbuster movie that just builds up with like two gods, and then when they go at it in the final fight, they transform into seals from Mortal Kombat. Also, how was Loki able to hold on to the, to the necklace as a seal? They don't have fingers, right? This wasn't the only time Loki and Heimdall clashed, though. They were, in essence, destined for conflict. Heimdall was the representation of order and literally maintained it on Asgard with his powers, while Loki was the god of mischief, an agent for chaos. Loki frequently came and went into Asgard as he pleased via unofficial means and asked any bouncer that's super annoying and just makes the job unnecessarily difficult. So, 
Heimdall, not a Loki fan. But all that beef between Heimdall and Loki so far was more fun and games compared to Loki's final act. An act that Heimdall saw coming, an act that caused Heimdall to finally sound the mighty Gjallarhorn. Loki invaded Asgard at the head of an army of evil, determined to destroy Asgard and end the cosmos with it. Of course, the who's who of Norse gods did anticipate this. Freya, Freke, and most of all Odin all had visions of this very future. And Odin and Freya had long created the Valkyries whose only job was to gather the souls of the bravest and strongest warriors only for them to train in the great halls of Valhalla day in, day out for millennia in preparation for this very event. So when Heimdall blew the horn to warn Asgard, these warriors were ready and stormed out of Valhalla's 540 gates, joining Odin, Thor, Tyr, and the other gods in their battle against Loki's army of evil, an army that featured Loki's sons, the mighty wolf, Fenrir, and the mighty snake, Jormungandr, as well as the Jötna, powerful frost giants who long sought to defeat the gods, and most of all, the army featured Surtur, the fire giant whose sword of flame was destined to destroy Asgard. But you already know that that Ragnarok video, that's a video for another day. But what I will tell you right now is that during Ragnarok, Heimdall and Loki fought each other. And in that battle, they also killed each other. Time for the extra notes, before it gets inevitably picked up in the comments. Yes, in Marvel's movies Heimdall was black, but in the ancient texts he is literally described as the whitest of all the gods. So white and bright, he literally had golden teeth. So if you think about it, it's actually hilarious The Marvel was like, yeah, let's make that guy black. <laughs> of all the Norse gods, which by the way, pretty sure they were all pretty Caucasian, you know, living in the north and all, to make Heimdall black, I love it. But hey, honestly, Marvel adapts the Norse mythology so freely. They change a lot and even mix and match powers amongst the gods. They're not trying to be an accurate representation. So since it's all an interpretation and inspired by, think about it this way. How much do you think it means to little black kids all over the world to have a black god in a Marvel movie? I speak from experience when I say that means a lot when you're a kid. And the same goes for all the other minorities that are represented among the Asgardian gods in Marvel's movies. Marvel does a good job at representation. It's all not mythologically accurate anyway, not at all. But that effect of feeling represented is very real. You know, just food for thought for the people who are upset about this. To make the whole matter of Heimdall's nine mothers even more confusing, Get this, one of his moms is named Jan Saxa. You know who else has that name? The mother of Thor's son Magni. And you want to make that even more confusing? Thor's wife is the goddess Sif, and sometimes Sif is also called Jan Saxa, and sometimes she is called a name that translates to the rival of Jan Saxa, which it just goes to show that Norse mythology is very scattered amongst many different texts. It's a mess, it's confusing, but now you know. And also that makes Thor Heimdall's brother and stepdad. <laughs> like that. To add on to the whole upper class son that Heimdall claimed for himself. Remember the one that was called Jarl, but Heimdall had his name changed to Rig? One of Rig's sons was Konr and Conor was described to be as strong as four men and the only one able to read runes and learn magic and even talk to animals, basically Avatar with muscles. And the ancient texts set this dude up for a serious adventure filled with battle, but then the text just suddenly cut off and we don't know how that story continues. Maybe it was lost to the times, maybe it was destroyed, maybe by Christians who like to mess with other religious texts, especially when they were so cool that they made Christianity look bad. Who knows, but the story disappeared. I don't know how, but now you know that it's there. I upload videos like this twice a week. Uh, so if you like, subscribe, ring that bell, uh, comment, and I hope I'll see you here twice a week in the comment section, just leaving some feedback, correcting me, dropping knowledge, whatever. All right, all right.